Hey everyone, welcome to the TV Marionettes podcast. My name is Megan, also known as Zebral on Ravelry and TV Marionettes on Instagram. Say hi to my dog Sam in the background. Um, last week, I recorded a day early. <laughs> um, I try to record on Wednesdays to keep it pretty regular. Um, but I recorded on Tuesday last week thinking it was Wednesday. And this week I'm recording a day later. I'm recording on Thursday. Um, it's October 22nd, 2015. And uh, it's Thursday afternoon. And even though it's October, it's still hot here in Arkansas. Um, With, it gets cold at night and in the mornings, but then it quickly warms up to in to in the eighties in the afternoons and it's October it should be cooler. Dang it. <laughs> Anyways, um I am doing things a little differently. Uh last week I said I mentioned that I have a new webcam. But the USB cord is pretty short and it doesn't reach to where I want to get to. And if I sit all the way back on my couch, I'd have to zoom in really far because I look really, really small otherwise. And when you zoom, the further you zoom in with the webcam, the lower the quality is. So I want to try to keep it as good quality as I can, picture-wise. And last week, I didn't have my intro um, in, the, in last week's podcast because I was trying to see if just uploading it straight to YouTube would affect the picture quality any, and it did. So I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to figure that out because while I was recording, while I'm recording right now, the picture is fantastic. It's really great, and it's just <laughs> when I uploaded it, it lost the quality quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to figure out the whole the secret compression to where it doesn't look so bad. I'll eventually figure it out. Um. I'm not sitting in the floor this time. I'm sitting on my ottoman. I can't see it. We can see it right here. Um, so, and I've got my webcam mounted up on top of my TV. So I'm kind of having to look up, and then I'm looking to the, and when I'm looking to the side, I'm looking at the TV screen to look at all my notes and stuff. And I actually took my notes, wrote out my show notes before doing this, starting this podcast. That way, hopefully, we'll have a better flow. Because I want to try to, you know, make the flow as nice as possible. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, I folks, I have one. And I should have put it on before I started recording. It is a hat, the Felix hat. Mm, I'm not messing my hair too much. Anyways, you can see the Felix. Sorry. <laughs> you can see the Felix cabling and stuff. See. It's not all the way finished. Um, I'm still waiting on my alpaca fur. Pom Pom to get here. I ordered it from England, so it's going to take a little while. I ordered it on Tuesday, and last I checked this morning, the order was still being processed, so who knows when's it, when it's going to get here. Hopefully it will get here soon. But it's a new design. Um, I use Lumen Fiber Arts yarn on their Dramaturg base. That's their DK Weight 100% Superwash Merino. Uh, the colorway is Poison Apple, and it is gorgeous. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love this color so much. I 
I'm gonna have to knit with it again. I am. It's it is so pretty. Anyways, I'm gonna take it off. So. <laughs> I don't want to flatten my hand much. Ah. Mm? Okay. Anyway. Um. But yeah, I love it. It is great. Um, I need to get it modeled. I need to add the pom pom. See, that's blared out. This is not a very good reference. This is, yeah, this is closer to the actual color. This just kind of blurs it out too much. But there's the design. It's very, very pretty. I love this yarn. Cannot, uh, compliment even more. I mean, it's just, it's, it's great. It's easy to knit with. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. And I have another color I'm going to talk about soon with another whip. Um, oh, I love it. I was thinking about maybe giving this to my model, uh, when it, when I do get it modeled. Um, I'm selfish like that. I'll like it. <laughs> I'll like it. Anyways, okay, let's move on to the whips. My Thea shawl didn't get that much love. I don't know why I grabbed this. It's not even attached. Um, didn't get that much. I mean, I guess I got a little bit done. I think I was probably, I need to start marking where I leave off when I, where I'm at on the previous episodes. I think I was maybe a few, maybe halfway or just a few rows in on this, on, on this color section. And I am about 10. No. Wait, yeah. And 11. I'm 11 rows into the next section, the next blue section. But yeah, it's coming along. The, it, it takes, it's getting to where it takes a really long time. It's gonna, it takes, it's getting to where it takes a really long time to finish a row because the stitches are growing and growing and I already have quite a bit stitches on the needles and they grow every um every row so yeah it takes a little while but I, I got a little bit of love not too much last week I was wanting to get the hat done and my next one my next whip I, last week I talked about making these socks into, what was it called, Melbourne, Melbourne cobblestone sock pattern. I ultimately decided against it because I'm knitting this up for a shop sample and I'm kind of wanting to get it done as quickly as possible so I decided just to do plain vanilla ankle socks and you can see the ribbing. I think last, last week I was just to the ribbing. I don't think I just, I don't, I might have just finished it, but as you can see, I've worked the heel flap, the heel turn, and I'm on the gusset right now. I think I only need a few more rows of decreases before I'm done with the gusset. I don't think it's too much. I'm not to really stretch the ribbing. But there's the color. These are for a shop symbol for our yarn, Red Umbrella. This color weight is not out yet, but I'm really liking how it's knitting up. It, there, there is some pulling, as you can see, but it's done in kind of like a um, a spiral striping effect, which to me, I I'm not the biggest fan of pulling for my own stuff. I don't. Yeah, a lot. Some people do like pulling. 
that's fine, you know. And I even like pulling on other people's projects, but for my own, I don't know. I just it <sighs> might be like an OCD thing for me. But if I am going to have pulling in my projects, I do prefer it to do to be in that spiral self striping pattern look. So, but I, I do like how how this is is pulling. It's just the way variegated is dyed. You're going to have some pulling. Anyways, I'm doing those two at a time. And I ultimately decided on ankle socks, mostly to, to have them go by faster, but I also bought some new riding boots. And my old ones I've had for, for years. Uh, over four years, actually, I think I've had them that long. They, the the sole was starting to come off, detach. So I needed to buy some new ones, and my new ones are a lot warmer than my old ones. And the the foot part is fine, but like the leg, it on the back, it's got kind of this leather lat uh, quilting look to it. It's actually kind of insulated or padded so it is warmer and so my legs and or my calves and my feet get warm pretty fast so I wanted my socks for wearing with them in this fall and winter to not I didn't want to do legs I wanted to do just ankle socks to make it more comfortable for me because in the winter I wear nothing but my riding I just wear my riding boots like every day so Anyways, um, moving on, another whip, I have so many whips, I actually have more than one showing, but these are the ones that I've gotten in love, and are going to be getting love, um, my next ones, I'm doing another new design, with Leading Men Fiber Arts, a drama, dramaturg base, again, uh, in, how did my yarn get so tangly? Uh, <laughs> um, in their, that's their DK weight 100% superwash, um, in their Lucky Charm colorway. And I've gotten so far on this. This is going to be a cardigan. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, this is going to be the Felix cardigan for the Felix collection. And right now I'm just working one by one rib. I ripped out the beginning of this collar I don't know how many times last night because I have this idea and it wasn't working with the different cast-ons and methods of trying to get it to work like I wanted it to but I also I didn't want to give up on the idea either so I've been pretty persistent about it and I think I've got it figured out hopefully and if I do I will hopefully have more to show of this cardigan than this next week hopefully um anyways I love this color first of all I love green I love green actually I love all colors if I'm being honest I really do um except for I don't know <laughs> Anyways, um, I love green, and this is just such a pretty green, and I wish I was making this in my size, but I'm not <laughs> making it for my model, and I'm going to be so jealous when I'm done with this because I'm going to want it for myself. I just know it. Poo. <laughs> Anyways, it, it's so gorgeous. This is what it looks like uncaked let me see let me try to get better yeah that's pretty that's pretty good that's pretty accurate so pretty yeah. like a charm 250 yards DK weight 100% super watch more you know you go check out their website it's Ludeman Fiber Arts dot big cartel dot com I think you can find it just leadingmenfiberarts.com too. I'm not sure. But yeah, leadingmenfiberarts. 
supposed to be below. I don't know. Dang it. Hmm? Sorry. <laughs> um, leadingmanfiberarts.bigcartel.com. It's a little darker in here because it's very overcast. I think it's about to start storming outside, so we're not getting very good natural lighting coming in today. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think it's supposed to storm. I was supposed to have a photo shoot with my model to do the laurel sweater this weekend, but it's storms are supposed to start coming in, and I think it's supposed to rain all night or all afternoon. The rest of the day today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So nothing but rain forever. But hopefully with the rain coming in, it will bring in the cool, crisp autumn temperatures that I so love. I'm hoping that comes in. Um, let's see. That's it as far as whips. Um, next up, stash enhancement. I haven't actually not all of it's here one of them was supposed to arrive today but it has not surprise surprise with my post office actually I'm not sure if it's my post office or maybe the the next stop like before mine actually I think they're a little bit slow in getting stuff finished but um I did have some other stuff come in I think I might have talked about them last week. I'm not doing a very good job of saving up for a spinning wheel. I will admit, I've been on a yarn diet because, in all honesty, I don't need any more yarn. I really don't. I don't have the and all the yarn. I have quite a bit of my stash on listed on Ravelry, but that's still not all of it. <laughs> I tried to be good about putting it on there, but I haven't gotten all of it put on, or listed on Ravelry. But I have quite a bit of yarn, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> and I don't have room for it, I really don't. It's actually, it's kind of, it's grown so much, it's kind of to the point where I'm not comfortable with it. Um, my husband, he was, he's kind of like, yeah, you're addiction, you know, I'm cool with that, you know, it's your thing, you know. Um, so he is a bit of an enabler. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. <laughs> so, that's not good for me. <laughs> but, I mean, I have been on a yarn diet, I think, before these purchases, it had been a month before my last yarn purchase. <laughs> If you don't include the yarn for our com for our, for our uh, for our business, um, which I don't, <laughs> even though that takes a room as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just kind of couldn't help myself. I had got it in the mind where I was thinking, yeah, I'm gonna save up for a spinning wheel. Instead of buying all this yarn, I'm gonna just save my money that I would have normally spent on these expensive skeins of yarn and save it up for a spinning wheel. Well, um, I saw a post. Well, really the worst thing for my yarn diet is going on the Addicted to Sock Knitting group on Facebook and Instagram as well because um, I'm friends with a lot of sock knitters on Instagram and Facebook. So I see their gorgeous socks that they make and sock yarn is kind of my my thing like most knitters are. I mean, you kind of get most bang for your buck really out of sock yarn. I guess you, I mean, you think about it. Um, and I'm addicted to knitting socks, so go figure. Uh, um, but anyways, so lately, what has been very popular on in that group, uh, and the reason why is because there was a self-striking knit-along going on in the group. Which I'm not sure if it's over yet or not. And um, and I forgot my Mr. Fox socks. I forgot to even state that that was for the knit along, but you know, whatever. But um, with that knit along, 
a lot of sock knitters knitted with, um, what's it called? Regia? Regia? If, am I pronouncing? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Um, and Opal. And I'm assuming that I've never used, I, I haven't used either one of them. Uh, with sock knitting, I do prefer hand dyed. Um, but I do like self striping a lot as well. And I really liked what, um, how these were knitting up the self striping. I really liked them. So I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. And, um, the website that I ordered this off of, it, it was 10 bucks. So not bad, especially for sock yarn, you know, and self striping, but it's, uh, and I'm assuming that Regia is probably the same way. At 75% virgin wool and 25% uh, nylon. And it is in, it's the opal, opal flower power in the, I just saw it. Where is it? Where are you? Okay. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Let me see them. Far, far bay, Farb, F A R B E. I don't know. Um, we'll see if you can see how it's supposed to. Let's see if it'll focus. Focus. It won't focus. But you can kind of see how it's going to knit up. Anyways, yeah. That's added to my sock yarn collection. Like more. And I bought some more sock yarn. <laughs> um, I saw someone knitted a pair of socks out of this. And I never even heard of it, but I really liked it. It's that speckled uh, dye look. And it's Plymouth Yarn Company Happy Feet 100% Splash. It is 90% Superwash Merino and 10% Nylon. Um, I don't know what colorway they did that got me to even look at it, look at the yarn. Um, but it's different than what I ordered. This is the <sighs> Blueberry Colorway. And it is... It is amazingly soft and so pretty. It's so pretty. This is not, let me see if it will do it better. You can't really tell the details that well, I guess. Anyways, it is unbelievably soft. It is that, um, it looks like two ply. Yeah, it is two ply, which honestly, that's not my favorite for sock yarn. Um, Knit Picks Hawthorne and some other um, bases that's usually an 80 20 sock yarn. It's two ply, and I don't really care for it because I don't particularly care for the stitch definition but this is very soft and it's a it's not that super high twist where it's two ply where you, that you normally see that is just very bumpy looking I guess that's the best way I can describe it um and if I mean if you ever use it picks popcorn, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but so I think I'm I think I'm gonna like this. It is so soft. So soft. I was thinking about maybe knitting this up for socks for a gift, but I don't think so. I think I'm gonna keep it for myself. But yeah, this is my first time ever using any plum any yarn from Plymouth Yarn Company. Honestly. Because they, they remind me, and I think I have seen them, I mean, it's been forever since I've been to Michael's, and when I think of big box stores, I think of Michael's. So, I don't know, do they, 
is Plymouth Yarn sold at Michael's? It's just from what I remember seeing of Plymouth Yarn before online, when I've shopped online, it seems like a big, big box store type yarn. But this isn't, I was really surprised when I read that when the, um, it was Winterburn Knits. Uh, who knit up a pair of socks out of this. I don't know what colorway she used. It might have been Autumn Breeze. I think that might be a colorway that sounds right. Um, but anyways, I was really surprised to see that it was Plum with Yarn. But it's, it's very nice. It's so squishy and soft. And I love it. And I can't wait to knit socks with that. But yeah, anyways. Speaking of my yarn diet. <laughs> and... Um, and needing to really knit up my stash, I have decided, and I've seen, uh, I've seen Steve from Dramatic Knits, uh, in his podcast talk about it. Like he will, I don't know if it's project or yarn or his stash, his stash that he does. I think he does it with his spinning. Like he he's got all of his fiber listed on Ravelry, and he has. All of his yarn listed on Ravelry as well, and I think he uses a random number generator app. And whatever number that pops out, that's what he 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 chooses that fiber to to be his next spinning project, and that yarn for his next knitting project or whatever. So I was thinking about doing that because um, I have a random number generator app for choosing. Uh, winners for the knit alongs. So I am very much thinking about doing that with my sock yarn. And in and that's what's great about adding all of your stash on Ravelry because when you have it all added and if you have selected um, or if you queued projects um, when you do that and you select from your stash what yarn you're wanting to use for that project that you have queued, when you go in and you randomly select whatever, just pick a yarn, it will have that in, on your, in your stash uh, information. It will say what project you have queued, which is pretty much linked to that yarn. <laughs> and anyway, so I've done that on, when I started, when I started, adding my stash to Ravelry, I did do that. I would, I, after I would add all my yarn, I would go through my library or just looking at patterns and I would add projects to that yarn. And I was really good about that when I first started doing that, but I've gotten, I've gotten really bad about it. I, don't, I haven't done it. Actually, I don't think I've done it since I, that first initial time. Oops. Anyways, but yeah, um, so once you have your stash added, you can filter out the different yarn weights. So, you, like, if you, I don't remember how it's uh, displayed under your stash, but when you click on your stash, up uh, at the top, it will have filter and you can choose fingering. Uh, you know, all the different ways. Lace, fingering, sport, blah, 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 blah. So, I was thinking about just filtering out, since I have, I have all of my sock yarn listed, um, just uh, filtering out the sock yarn or fingering weight, whichever, and then using my random number generator app for that, and whatever number it pops out will be that yarn, and I will use that to knit up socks. Or, um, you can't, you cannot filter between sock yarn and fingering weight, you know, like shawl yarn. Um, and what I mean by that, um, if you're, if you don't knit socks, I prefer, when I think of sock yarn, I always think of a blend of wool and nylon. So I don't knit my socks with 100% wool. Um, I know some people don't have a problem with it, and then there, and then some people do. Um, I like that extra strength 
that the nylon provides. So that's what I prefer knitting with my socks. Um, my 100% merino or wool yarns, I save those. I use those skeins strictly for shawl knitting or accessories. Yeah, so, or sweater. Um, and then save my wool nylon blends for sock. But rubbery doesn't have a filter the way you can, you, they might, they might actually have a filter for fiber content. I just haven't paid attention. Uh, maybe they do, but I just figured I would just filter out the fingering weight yarn and then use the random number generator. And if it does, if that yarn happens to be a 100% wool and not a blend, then that's what I'll knit to make, to use for a shawl. So. I was thinking about doing that for gift knitting for next year. Um, every everyone this year, um, except for the men, but all the women uh, in on my gift knitting list is getting a carry shawl. Except for one, I have I I haven't knitted um, my niece. I haven't needed her gift yet, and I'm still kind of back and forth. I'm still thinking about maybe just doing a hat for her, but then again, I don't know. I might do a carry shawl if I have time. Um, the closer it gets, I mean, it, if I really, really concentrate, the carry shawl does not take that long to knit. I have knitted one in less than a week. Um, week's time. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I could very well do it. So, we'll see. But, next year, we're, everyone is probably going to get socks. Um, so, I'm going to mention the Grimes shawl <laughs> for gift knitting next year. And, I very well might, I might do that. It's going to be a toss-up. I think between socks and and the grime shawl. I don't think. Let's see how many carries did I knit? Four. I think it was four carries this year, and I don't think that includes the, part, the original one for the pattern. And don't get me wrong, I really love the shawl. It's super easy to knit. It's super easy to memorize. It's pretty much mindless, and it does go pretty fast. But at the same time, I don't want to knit five grime shawls next year, like the same shawl. Yeah, but everyone might carry this. <laughs> Anyways, so we'll see. But I think people are going to be getting socks. I always have socks on the needles, anyways, so very well might be socks. Except for my brother. Um, I'm still working and I didn't show his socks because I didn't knit on them at all in this past week since I last recorded so I'm not showing them as a whips this week but um, yeah after these socks if I do knit socks for my brother again they're definitely going to be plain vanilla socks um, that's assuming that I get these done in time for Christmas why? Why? Wait a ways. But I did buy some yarn in mind for him for next year if I do knit socks. And that's kind of what I talked about last year. Or not last year, last week. Last, oh my gosh. Anyways, um, I was thinking about knitting him a pair next year for Christmas or for his birthday. His birthday is in May. Um, out of the Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is their show stealer base. It's a 80% marine, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. This is their Man of Mystery colorway, which is just is gorgeous. It's manly. It's in the color category that my brother would wear. <laughs> He's very particular about colors. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about if I do knit him socks next year, it will be out of this. 
But wouldn't this make a very pretty shawl? <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. If the Brandon number generator pops that up, then that's what I will be. Anyways. And yes, I store some of my sock yarn on the, in my entertainment center. <laughs> in the drawer in my entertainment center. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have quite a bit. I store my really nice ones in there, actually. And the drawer is hard enough to pull out where my boys can't pull it out and get into it. Because my oldest, who is almost four, he likes to get my yarn out and kind of toss it around and carry it around. And he doesn't knit, even though... I definitely, I'll be knitting along, like for instance, I was knitting along on my brother's socks. And, um, anyways, he, he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm knitting socks for Uncle Michael. And, <laughs> and I was like, you want to knit, you want to knit Uncle Michael's a pair of socks? And so he took the needles and he kind of did this stab and he's like, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, so, okay, so when Christmas comes around and I gift these to Uncle Michael, does that mean that you're, are you going to say that you knitted them? And then he nodded his head, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but he does kind of seem vaguely interested in knitting. So maybe one of these days, and since I don't have a girl, a little girl, yet... Who knows if we will or not. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, I have two boys, and hopefully, hopefully I can get them to knit, maybe. Or at least interested to learn. You know, it's a skill. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, yeah. Sorry. I kind of went off on the tangent there. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, all the FOs, whips, stash enhancement. Let's move on to TV Nerd Knits News. Uh, we have two new longs going on. There's the 2015 Great Stash Bust. And that's, you can enter in anything that you make as long as it's with stash yarn. It doesn't have to be one of my designs. It can be any project. does not matter as long as it has as long as it was knitted with stash yarn, it has to be an FO. Um, and the drawing for that will be at the end of this year, December 31st, is when we'll close down the website. Considering that December 31st is New Year's Eve, midnight, I will not be thinking about Ravelry. Well, who knows? I probably won't be thinking about Ravelry, and I probably will not get on there to close down that knit along right then at when midnight strikes so or heck I probably won't even do it in the morning like on New Year's Day eventually it will get closed down afterwards but just try to get your stuff entered in before the knit along closes um, but you've got quite a bit of time and hopefully with Christmas and gift knitting uh, coming up or I've already started, hopefully some people will get some stuff in. Um, anyways, but yeah, check that out. Be sure to enter in for it. Like I said, you can enter in anything. Um, and, and, and there are rules for that. Uh, check that your stash had to have been added by a certain date and stuff, so check that out. Um, the 2015 Grime Shawl No Long is happening right now. Um, there's been some chatter. There hasn't been any FOs yet. I hope, I hope there will be. Um, this week, this coming week is like, it's 31st, Halloween. It's not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So hopefully people can get some FOs in there. I've seen quite a bit of grime shawls on Instagram being in the process of being knitted. So hopefully... I can get some FOs in there because I have three prizes to give away. Um, we'll see. 
<laughs> we'll see if they get finished. Um, I don't know what the next Nerong will be yet. It very well might be for the Laurel sweater. I'm thinking about maybe doing two more knit-alongs. And one of them, I'm really thinking about doing just uh, entitling it uh, Giftmas, uh, Gifts for Christmas, uh, knit-along for uh, the months of November and then into December. And ending that new long maybe like a week before Christmas or a couple or maybe even just a couple of days before Christmas and seeing how that goes. Um, and if I do that, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that. But um, when when we do that, it's just going to be it can be anything. It doesn't matter what what it is. Just anything as long as it's like a craft. So I think that will be fun. And so we'll get that entered. Um, next up, what am I watching? Well, let's start with Walking Dead. And this, there, there's going to be some spoilers. Um, so if you have not watched last week's episode, stop watching now if you don't want to get spoiled. But last week's episode, watching that, I couldn't help but think, geez. I want to be Carol when I grow up. <laughs> I told my husband that I was like, man, I want to be Carol when I grow up. <laughs> she is such a badass. <laughs> it's, you know, in all honesty, I, I wasn't ever a huge Carol fan. I mean, my two characters were mostly Rick and Daryl. You know, they've always been that. But Carol kind of slowly grew on me. Especially with just her character arc and how she's evolved and stuff. And, you know, the, the bad guys at the end of last season, the ones that had the W's on their foreheads, they had a much larger group as we saw in last week's episode than... I thought, I mean, I was kind of thinking it was just two, those two guys from last season. Apparently not. It's a pretty large group. Well, they were the ones that were responsible for the whole horn thing happening uh, in the previous episode, at the end of the previous episode. And anyways, it's amazing how Morgan was like the only one that got there. I guess we'll see more on that for this week's, but... Um, Morgan, oh my gosh, uh, when he was talking to Carol and saying, you don't, you don't enjoy this, you know, the, when she takes on that whole mentality, I'm assuming, and especially in the reference of what, you know, was happening, that he was referring to the killing, killing of other people and zombies and blah 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 you know of course he obviously doesn't have a problem getting rid of zombies um but other people you know and the way she's living her life well okay she doesn't i mean who would unless you're one of the bad guys um but at the same time morgan hello she's getting crap done you know she of course, we don't know what has happened with Morgan in between the times we have seen him. You know, we saw him at the beginning of the first season, and then we met up with him again when he was all kind of cray-cray and, uh, you know, booby-trapped with that whole entire town center, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So we went cray cray there, but we don't really know what has happened between that, you know, that time and then this time. Um, like we don't we don't know who he has met up with and stuff. We're assuming that maybe those two guys from this new group, this new bad group, are the only bad guys he's really been in contact with, you know, since we've last seen him. So considering people that 
Carol has been around, the, the, the groups that they have come in contact with, and the, these bad people that they've had to deal with, it's just, it's, she knows, and she knows you have to get stuff done, and Carol gets stuff done. I, I love her. I love her. Anyways, um, yeah, that's for Walking Dead. Uh, The Flash. Yeah. Hmm? Honestly, what happened in The Flash? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, Harrison Wells popped up again at the end of the episode. Again, he did in the previous weeks. Um, it was really, it was just kind of, nothing really happened in this last episode. I mean, not really. And then, oh yeah, Mr. Cold, or whatever his name is. <laughs> he's like the standard bad guy for them, but he's not bad, but not good, you know? Anyways, I guess he's moving on to the next spinoff with, what's his name? Um... Ray Palmer and stuff, and anyways, I haven't watched Arrow yet, so no spoilers for that for me, please, <laughs> but anyways, but in last week's Arrow, we knew that Laurel dug up her, oh, that's right, I recorded on Tuesday, sorry, last week, okay, well, in last week's Arrow, Laurel dug up her sister. Someone just messaged me. Um, Laurel dug up her sister, and that's that was the end of the episode. So, and oh, and she was talking to Theo about going and talking with Merlin, who's he's the new Rachel, and um, and dipping her sister in Rachel's hot tub. And bringing her back to life. So Arrow, I imagine this week is setting up for her sister to go, to go off onto the spinoff with Ray Palmer as well. Yay. Huh. Um, I probably won't be watching that show in all honesty. I didn't, I don't, I don't really care for Ray Palmer's character. Just kind of, and, um, and I've, I've heard that Mr. Cold or whatever his name is, is supposed to be um, another character for that spinoff. Don't care about him. And also, and then we knew that, we knew that the, is Laurel the Black Canary or the Canary? No. Okay. Sarah is the, is the Canary. Yeah. Anyways, we know that she's going to be on that show as well. And if I were to watch that show, I mean, I, I would really be watching that show for her character, but I don't really care enough about her character to watch it. So I'm going to be watching that show. <laughs> um, and besides that, two shows from the Arrow and Flash writers is probably pretty good for me because... Doing me wrong, I do like Arrow and I like and I do like the Flash, but the writing for the shows sometimes is just it's astounding by how uh, how stupid <laughs> it is. <laughs> um Oh, that's right. I was gonna talk about that. For instance, an arrow last week with Felicity being the CEO of Palmer Technologies, which used to be Queen Technologies or whatever it was called. Um, <clears throat> First of all, she would not be the CEO. Second, I know that Palmer passed on the, the title and responsibility and blah, blah job, blah, blah, to her. It, that's not how it works. And also, with her, a CEO, <laughs> a person in her position, does not personally bring in these low-level, because that's what they are, low-level employees, and personally fire them. They, uh, 
this, you know, I was I turned to my husband. I was like, this is not how business works. This is not how companies are ran. It, to have these writers never worked, like actually worked for a company, you know, other than writing for a entertainment company, you know, have you never done that before in their life? Because it obviously shows. <laughs> Whatever. It's just it's those things like that from these writers for Flash and Arrow that just it just gets on my nerves. <laughs> so, anyways, I don't think I could handle another show from them. In all honesty, <laughs> you know. Um. Anyways, we're on Supernatural. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the darkness baby grew up to be a little girl and then she grew up to be a teenage a teenager and she likes to eat souls. And yeah. Oh, and Crowley has become a mommy, so to the darkness little girl slash teenager now. So, you know, and Crowley's own mommy came back, um, Marina. So yeah. Which she's fun, I actually like her. Um, but other than that, nothing really happened in Supernatural either. Eh. I've heard that, I mean, and I haven't seen this, um, but I've heard that, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and, um, the guy that played Lucifer, whatever the actor's name is, are supposed to be coming back this season, making guest appearances, and I'm wondering when that's going to occur, if it is, so I'm ready, I'm ready for that to happen. I mean, they kind of keep teasing about it, like even at the end of last season and stuff, Death talking about, you know, unleashing the darkness, and then, um, and they kind of had little teases about it too in this season when they talked about, they keep mentioning Lucifer and also mentioning like the pit and stuff like that, that Lucifer and Michael both are supposed to be in. I wonder if they're going to bring about the actor that played, um, that played the other Winchester brother, Adam. I wonder if he's coming back. Who, like, he ended up, Michael ended up embodying him. So, I mean, if Lucifer's released, then he should be too. Unless Lucifer killed Michael, so who knows? Anyways, whatever. I'm ready for that to start happening. Because this week's and last week's episodes of Supernatural have been kind of meh to me. For me. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, that's it for my TV watching. And yeah. Anyways, hopefully I will have some more work done on the cardigan to show off for next week. Um, I'd very much like to thank um Steve and his partner Andy of Lady Men Fiber Arts for providing me with this unbelievably gorgeous yarn. I, seriously, I am so in love with the colors. I mean, I've always, I've always been a big fan of their yarn. I purchased a few uh, this past year. And in all honesty, if they do another Thanksgiving sale like they did, or well, when I say Thanksgiving sale, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, whatever sale, you, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, when they do, if they do another one of those like they did last year, yeah, I'm going to be breaking my yarn diet again. Especially if they have the harvest or foliage, whatever that color was called. Especially if they have that available. I would really like it. I really like, this is what I really like about their color so much. And I mean, they are men dyeing these colors. So they have... Um, that eye, that you know, a, a different eye for color, and it's great because a lot, especially indie dye, indie dyers. What I have found, especially for sock yarn, there's a lot of variegated out there, which we do, <laughs> and is our most popular colors. <laughs> colorways as well, even though I'm about the semi-solid, but whatever, anyways, 
but a lot of indie dyers, the colorways are what females would wear. Which, don't get me wrong, I like this color on female, but I also, I have to keep in mind what, what can I knit, you know, that the men in my life are going to wear. You know, my brother, my dad, my husband, you know. Um, so, it kind of comes a little tricky to find colors for men in indie dyed yarn. Um, and you kind of have to go to commercial. And commercial yarn that have manly colors are dark and muted usually. So, and I know the men in my life are not going to be wearing pinks and pastels or even like super like rainbow colors and um they're not going to wear variegated and they're not going to wear speckled dyed and they're not going to wear purples and um maybe reds if they're dark enough you know um they're just they're, they're not going to wear those colors even if they're socks they're not going to wear them so that's what i really like about leading and fiber arts is they have i mean they obviously have that in mind for themselves um or what they as men as men would wear and so that's what i really love about their yarn they have a lot of colorway options that a guy that you can knit for the men in your life because that aren't like the dark drab colors, you know, like this. You know, I could get my dad or my brother, probably not my husband, <laughs> to wear like socks out of this color, for instance, and like the one I showed off, the Man of Mystery color. So they have fantastic colors for that, for me, you know. So, anyways, I strongly, strongly encourage you to, like, if you have stuff that you want to knit for the men in your life, you know, whether they be socks, sweaters, hats, whatever, um, to check them out if you are a, if you are a supporter of Indie Dyers. Definitely, definitely check them out because they have the colorways for it. So seriously, they do. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just can't think enough for providing me with the yarn, um, especially the cardigan because it's going to take up quite a bit of yarn. <laughs> And they sent me quite a bit. <laughs> so, anyways. But yeah. Um, but that pretty much wraps it up. I hope everyone has a good week. Happy knitting. Uh, check out the knit alongs. I encourage you to join the Ravelry group, TV Nerd Knits. Um, we do giveaways, knit alongs, so forth and so on. So, check it out. Join it. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Happy knitting. Have a good week. Bye, everyone.